For those of you who have been subscribed for a while, or those of you who subscribe right now, because I won't know the difference anyway, you might know that one of my all-time favorite story concepts has been the backrooms. I've played around with the idea in Minecraft in the past, and you can check those videos out by clicking the icon in the top right corner of your screen, but before you do that, you're probably going to want to watch this video to the end to see how much has changed. I'm determined to make this build in particular the largest, most challenging, and comprehensive Minecraft backrooms experience out there. And despite this build already spanning thousands of blocks and well over a hundred different rooms, this is only just the beginning. If you like what you see today, once again, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon to stay up to date with this build as it progresses, as well as dropping a like and comment to help me against the YouTube algorithm. With all that said, sit back, relax, enjoy, and most importantly, don't get lost. Much like my previous iteration of the backrooms, you can kind of think of this build like a large maze. But unlike that previous iteration, which came with its own set of problems, bugs, and general shortcomings, this build aims to fix, improve upon, and pretty much run away with every concern that previous build raised. After the handful of playtests run and videos made in the past, my own intuition and your comments and feedback led me to understand that there are five major points that vastly needed to improve. The first point, I'm sure goes without saying, but just in case it didn't, the addition of the resource pack has been a huge step forward in making this as immersive as possible. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the smaller details in the pack, much like the little plugs and the air vents, but my favorite detail has got to be the stained carpet texture. It's just the perfect uncomfy addition to the palette and I love it. The second major improvement in this version of the Minecraft backrooms is the way I'm using portals both in quantity and placement. I realize this video has gone on for way too long for me to not have mentioned immersive portals yet, so let's finally get into that. If you haven't figured it out yet, the Immersive Portals mod is kind of the driving force of this build and the way it behaves. We're going to discuss how specifically the map works a little later. Just know that I'm not here to shuffle you around in a couple spots like last time. I've been extremely careful to make sure that A, it's very hard to notice where portals are, and B, sometimes going through a portal on top of being unnoticeable is also irreversible. Who said it was supposed to be easy? Speaking of which, no, you can't just follow a wall either in this version of the backrooms. I've, I fixed that too. The third point of improvement, which maybe you gathered from the bits and pieces I've shown here and there, is that the map is just huge. Like I said, thousands of blocks of floor space and over a hundred different rooms so far. I will admit, if you know the perfect path, you could probably bang through it in a relatively short distance. However, the map has been designed to make it very easy to walk a long way and be sent backwards without you realizing it. The fourth point of improvement in this map will be the addition of different imagery and most importantly, levels. I have yet to figure out the right way to execute on the idea. However, as some of you have seen in my community tab, which is where I've been teasing and posting various images of the progress of the build, the first non-level zero space I plan on including is the pool rooms, or the dream pools, as described by their creator, Jared Pike. But as for the standard backrooms experience, beyond the normal rooms I'm working with, I also plan on taking a few pages out of Kane Pixel's playbook, as his recently developing backroom series is the best source material for the story I've ever seen. And if you have yet to experience it, which if that's the case, it must be a, uh, Pretty nice rock you've been living under. I highly recommend you check it out. I'm gonna put links where links usually go. You know how it is. And the final most substantial point of improvement is the way the map works and how I've implemented a form of progression into the project. Now, a magician never reveals his secrets, but today, just for you, I'm gonna pull back the curtain just a little bit so you can get a taste of what my headspace over the last month or so has been like. Let's get into it. The map functions as follows. I'm building the map in large collections of rooms, or as I'm calling them, modules. Each module of rooms contains three different types of portals. I'm gonna put this stone block here as our point of reference. The first type of portals, are the ones that loop from end to end in a module to quickly give you the sensation of walking for forever, or at least a very long time. There's a couple of these in each module, but uh, they do uh, very much inflate the uh, sensation of distance traveled. The second type of portal is a very sneakily placed portal that will take you to and from the next module in the sequence. So bit of a spoiler here, to get from module one to module two, you're gonna walk in this room, enter this room and exit from the other side. So if I'm looking at this hallway, got like a doorway right here and a doorway over there and a big open space here. 
If I walk in and out, the hallway has changed. And we're now in module two, which brings me to the third type of portal, which start to appear after the first module. And those will irreversibly set you backwards without you being able to notice. Whether it sends you all the way back to module one, or at least a couple modules back, you can never be too careful when making your way around. The other way I'm indicating a sort of progress to the player is in the design of the rooms. Module runs rooms follow a very strict and regular design. Modules two and three start to introduce a little bit of chaos in the size and shape of the rooms, while modules four and five go off the deep end when it comes to variety in wall height, floor space, and room layout. I'm currently working on module six, which we're gonna have a look at together in a little bit, but for module six, I've decided that the gimmick will be less chaotic, but much larger rooms, almost uncomfortably so. I plan on building 10 modules before I lease the first version to the public, but in the meantime, I've still got a lot of work to do. And to finish off this video, we're gonna do just that. And with that said, that is the end of the uh, scripted portion of this video. So if you've been enjoying how uh, much direction and conviction and intent I had in the way I was talking, then this video is no longer for you. But we are now going to exit, um, through the ceiling, we're gonna go into spectator mode. And if you had any doubts about my claims towards the size of this build, hopefully they are about to be silenced. Cause uh, we've got a lot, uh, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to this. It's very large. Like I said, lots of portals, lots of different rooms, lots of floor space. We have one, uh, two, three, four, five modules down, and we are working on number six right now, which I realize doesn't have a numerical indicator on the roof. I'm going to build it right now, and we're going to get this show on the road. Six. That's a, I can, oh my gosh. Six. Or, or a G, but it's a six. Module six is very small right now, despite the rooms being very big. We've got a long hallway. We've got this big room here, which has a small room with an entrance over there. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Coming through this end of the hall, we've got this big room that's got like a weird shelf of floor and another shelf of floor with a little opening up there. And if we go back into the aforementioned big room with smaller room on the inside, we can have a look inside and, oh my gosh, it's bigger on the inside. What a novel concept. No, um, this is how uh, you end up on that shelf in the room. So I only have one looping portal in module uh, six. So what I think I'm going to demonstrate at the very least is how I'm putting these portals together and how I'm making them look as seamless as I am, because there is a lot that's going into making these portals actually work, you know, without you being able to notice there's a portal there, or at least without being told. You get the idea. One of the biggest challenges in building these back rooms is that it's really hard to come up with new ideas for rooms. Yes, I'm building big rooms and that's fine, but keeping the variety interesting is definitely easier said than done. So you know what? I think I know what I'm going to do. I am going to build something that exits here. There's going to be something out of here. And uh, don't worry about the purple room. Don't worry about the purple room. I'm going to build another room that comes out of here. And this actually, you know, we're going to make a very small entrance because this is going to be another big room. I really like the idea of doing just uncomfortably large rooms. You know what? Actually, no, this is going to be a small room with a very, very, very like horrendously tall ceiling. So we're going to make a square room. And uh, once again, if any of you needed a reminder, because I know this bothers people and I think it's kind of funny that it bothers people, I'm not using world edit. We're just doing it by hand. All of this, all of this. <sighs> All of this is done by hand. I'm gonna build the first little bit of wall here and then I'm gonna throw together some commands that will um, get the uh, rest of the walls up. But again, like I said, this is going to be very, very like uncomfortably tall. I'm gonna build stuff that exists in the higher levels of this room. But for now, we're just gonna make a tall room that's got a portal on the other side of it. That seems unreasonably tall enough. Uh, air. That is a horrendously tall room. And now I need to make a uniform pattern of lights. The light is probably not even going to reach the bottom of the room now that I'm thinking about it. If I put a light here. Yeah, no, the bottom of the room is still very... <laughs> that is horrendous. <laughs> Anyways, let's put the portal here. No, too small. We could put it here though, right? That's enough room. That should be well enough room. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to place a entrance to the end of this room, as well as the one in the hallway that you already saw. And we're just gonna place the portals and you're gonna immediately see one of the biggest challenges that I've had to face with every portal I add to this build. So if I light this up, let's clean up the blocks. Fill in this, fill in that, fill in those. Let's walk through here, add everything back. And what's already obvious is that the lighting conditions from one side of a portal do not carry to the other side of the portal. What this means 
is I need to replicate these lighting conditions here. Allow me to kind of do this and uh, you'll see what I mean. The light for this is one, two away from the block that's just above here. So if I go, let's try and be consistent. If I go one, two, that is the closest source of light to that portal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this room now. Let's cover all of this up. Something else I don't need is this portal here because no one's ever going to see it because of course it's two way from that side. If I've played my cards right, what we should have is a seamless line between the rooms or something relatively close to it. Oh, I forgot. I didn't do it on the other side, but here's the thing about the light on the other side. The light from all the way up there is not reaching the ground. The only light coming into this room is coming from this fake room on the other side. So what I'm guessing is that if I just straight up block off this room, because there's no light coming into it, if I block this off, that should be the seamless transition we need. Oh, there does appear to be a little bit of a misalignment. Maybe I've made a mistake. Maybe I'm ill-informed on the science of lighting in Minecraft. I've just had a thought. You know what it probably is? Hmm, let me have a look. Oh, no, I'm stupid. You know what it is? It is the ambient occlusion from that wall being too close. Let me fix this by bringing the wall out just a little bit more. Again, I don't really have to cover up the ceiling and use the right wall blocks for this, but it makes me feel a lot better about things. And I'm thinking, there we go, look at that. Perfect, so we can walk through and back and there's no apparent lighting change. Let me real quick get rid of this unnecessary portal. And just like that, we've got ourselves a portal. Now, let me uh see how this feels. It definitely feels a little weird to just have a small hole there, but that is so just unnerving. What's probably gonna happen with this module playing with height and distance is like, for example, say I put a doorway here that just for whatever reason spits you out like here and just a, a weird series of just large gaps and confusing geometry. Um, I mean, confusing geometry is the name of the game in terms of the back rooms, but I digress. You get the idea. So with that short demonstration out of the way, I am going to leave you, uh, I'm gonna leave you here. I'm going to leave the, this is going to be the end of the video. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. And I hope you're just as excited as I am to see this project progress. If you are, do consider subscribing to the channel as I'm going to be posting more videos, you know, as I get more levels and, you know, concepts and ideas, what have you, whatever, whatever happens, um, those are going to come out. If you have any questions about this build, do let me know because I would love to do a Q&A kind of video about the build as uh, as it progresses and maybe do more of those as more questions arise. However, that is all I have to say. That, that is that is the video. That That's the whole thing, the whole shebang. You've seen how it works. You've seen how it's built. You've seen how I've dealt with lighting. You've seen all the challenges I've had to face. This has been a lot. It's been a headache. It's been a blessing and a curse, but I love it. I love the concept. I am so excited about this build and I hope you are too. But that is gonna do with this video. I need to start, I need I need to shut up and like edit this and get it out so you all can enjoy it. But that is gonna do with this video. So if you like this video and you wanna see more stuff like this, then do consider subscribing and sharing this video to your friends, places, things, and blah, blah, blah. That is going to do with this video. And I will see all of you in the next one. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.